Hey guys, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra, and this is your Manus Dry Fire Monday, and I'm your guest instructor, Brian Hill from The Complete Combatant. I'm gonna try something here on the camera. I don't know if, how well it's gonna work. Hopefully you guys can see it. What I wanna talk about is preparing the trigger to fire during transition. Today's video was brought to us by Mantis. The Mantis family of products is integral to ASP staff building handgun and carbine skills, and are your most economical and fastest path to improvement in your skills too. Whether you choose the X10, the Laser Academy, the Blackbeard, or use them all in concert, they will help your practice be more effective, efficient, and fun. Go check them out, pick up a unit, and thank them for sponsoring today's video. That sounds really complicated, but if I'm moving from one target to the next, I do want to hit the other target. That's important. And what I can't do is just drive as hard as I can, try to center the gun, and then fire the shot. It sounds like the right way to do it, but what will happen is you'll actually drive past the target if you do that. So I'm gonna start beginning to prepare to fire as I enter the outside edge of the target. So I'm gonna use this cert pistol and see if you guys can see that. All right, see that red, there he is, all right. So this is me aiming, and as I enter right here, what I begin to do is prep, 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 a little more pressure, a little more pressure, and it fires right there, okay? That's where I'd wanna hit the target because I got ahead of it. I'm prepping here, and I'm starting to move the trigger and then I'm going to fire towards the center. What happens for a lot of people is they drive to the center and it goes, keeps going and then they fire somewhere on the outside edge. So they've gotten to here and boom, it tends to walk to the other side. So we call that prepping the trigger, which means putting it in preparation to fire. And what I'm talking about here is I begin to move it to the rear until it fires. I keep it moving at a steady pace relative to the size of the target and the speed I'm moving at. So let me shoot this one so you guys can kind of see it. You really can't see my aiming process, but these targets are close enough I can see both of them. So all I have to do, as soon as the red dot comes in the outside edge right here of the target, then I'm going to fire the shot. One of the reasons I don't shoot a reticle, and a lot of people shoot a reticle and do a great job with it, but for me, the reason I don't shoot a reticle is because I want to know where I'm entering the edge of the target at speed and then prep the shot, all right? The reticle is really good at accurate at, uh, when we're holding on a, a, a target still, but I find it very hard as I change distances to prep the trigger appropriately. The only thing with the red dot is if I'm prepping here for such a large target, then it, I get a lot more time. If it's a smaller mid-sized target, I get less time, and if it's a tiny bitty circle, I have to slow it down and be ready to shoot. So I always know where that dot is relative in my transition. Put insert pistol down, eyes and ears on. So I'm doing it close. I don't really have a choice with this except to be close because of the camera angle. It doesn't really matter. It's the idea of how I'm going to address the trigger as it enters the target. Now I can see both targets. I'm extremely close to them. So I'm gonna fire one on the one. And then as I come across, I'm gonna to begin to prep the trigger and try to put that in the center of it without the gun actually having to uh, stop, s try to fix it and then shoot. I'm going to try to ease it right into position with good braking principles. So the first one to the big circle is really easy because it's a large target. I have a lot of room for error. All right, let's see what that looks like. Okay. So good hits, everything's in, of course, can't miss it this range, right? But what I'm practicing is getting that ready. As soon as I saw the dot enter the outside of the milk bot bottle a circle, I just started to begin to press the tr trigger and then that gave me a good center hit. But what if I'm shooting the two headshots? Well, the same thing is, but I gotta be a little more careful and I'm gonna start slowing or breaking the pistol a little earlier in the process. So I'll probably, when I get to that small circle up there in the head box, I'm going to slow it down a little bit. So let's see what this looks like. One to each head. Okay. And you can see a little still, a little overdrive. I wasn't quite ready. I hadn't slowed the gun all the way down, but pretty good shooting. Everything's right where it needs to be at this distance, but I'm practicing that preparation as soon as I enter the circle. Now I got the little guys, got the little circles. All right, so I'm gonna shoot the other one, I'm gonna drive, but I'm just gonna let it float the rest of the way until it comes in there very gently and I'm prepping the trigger and I'll shoot a center shot. Let's see what that looks like. Close one, I think I'll do that one again. That's a little low, let's try it again, okay. There we go. So, just as I coasted it in and very gently, taking up the pressure in the trigger until it's ready to fire and letting the braking happen. 
Now I can see both circles. So you can do this pretty quick. Uh, the timer will tell you the truth about what you're doing. So if I did each one again, I'm looking for the time in between shots. So this is called uh, our, our splits between shots, but don't get it confused with just shooting one target. What I wanna do is have this a pretty smooth methodology. So uh, it would be easy for me to fire two shots in 0.4 or 0.5, but all I wanna do is move the gun to the other target and have virtually the same score. So let's see what that looks like real quick. Okay, a little over 0 0.6. 0 0.6, it feels like a long transition this close. That's kind of odd. All right, so I got, a, I got a 24 and a 36. I'm close to where I want to be, but I'm going to try it again and see if I can get a little bit quicker movement, get on the trigger a little bit sooner. All right, see if I can get there. Let's do it one more time. All right, I'm a human metronome, it's 0.61. I didn't get any real difference. I've never really shot it this close, so maybe I'm learning a lesson right here. So if I go to the headshots, probably gonna see 0.8. That's what I should see next between the two transitions of the target. Okay, about right, 0.76 on that so the math is staying in there both into the head easy transition so probably a one for these two small circles so a 25 to react 0.7 to drive across because that would be that circle at 25 yards let's see if that works out okay hit to the outside gray and 0.95 all right, and then I would just start working on it and see if I'm breaking and prepping that trigger right before I get in there. Now, there's always somebody asked me, it was, what about finger on the trigger? This is not uh, where I'm not shooting. I've got two people or two targets very close to each other, so I'm gonna transition from one to the other as quickly as I can, and what I'm practicing is that transition. Uh, so I will be prepping the trigger during the firing cycle. Now, if there was a longer transition or was anything in between, I'd take my finger off the trigger. But this is very close, so think about two get bad guys together, and we're going to try to move from one to the next, or he could be moving. That's an even better way to think about it. Think of him as running to the side, and you've got to track that. So being able to track and stay in the center of it, or slightly to the front edge, you'll get a better shot. All right, let's see if that works for you guys. I hope it does. So this is something you have to do in dry practice with different size targets, and you got to go to the range and confirm it live. But there's a lot of value there of learning to make these transitions. I know I did a transition drill earlier uh, in, in, in the year, but think about it this way. This is the prepping of the transition. So how much prep do I put on the trigger? Remember, the word prep means preparation. We're, pre we're preparing it to fire, so I'm going to keep my finger moving the whole time. Revolver shooters are more familiar with this because of a long double action or DASA guys. But for you guys, it should be a certain amount of prep. You don't want to get to the wall and hold. You want to keep it moving. And as you enter and see what you need to, press the trigger. And you'll find that you have a high degree of accuracy. Let's look at these real quick because I know the light's kind of, kind of funky. All right. There he is. And there's that guy. All right. So accuracy, fine. Now my big head's in here. So I hope that helps you guys a little bit with it. All right. Practice it. See if you can get those transitions to move smoothly by prepping the trigger just a little earlier. If you have a cert pistol, you can practice without using any ammo. All right, guys, make sure you subscribe to Active Self Protection Extra and the main channel. Uh, hit the button down below with a like. Leave a comment. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant, and as always, measure, refine, and perform.